This is lecture six, week seven. So congratulations on making it to the final lecture. Uh, this is in two parts as well. And then uh, this week we will be covering emergency support functions, incident management teams, and the Department of Homeland Security. But in part one right here, we'll just be covering ESFs, emergency support functions. In the last lecture, I told you that discussing the NRF, the National Response Framework, before ESFs was a more logical sequence. This is because ESFs are included within the NRF. Using the graphic from the previous lecture, I added ESFs under the NRF to illustrate their place in the National Preparedness Goal. I mentioned that the NRF is a guide for federal response to disasters. Well, ESFs are a continuation of that principle. ESFs describe the roles and responsibilities of federal agents in their response. At the federal level, there can be considerable overlap in responsibilities if they are not defined ahead of time. Defining the responsibilities helps to prevent what is known as mission creep and an increased overlap of objectives by agencies. Mission creep, as its name indicates, occurs when a responding department or agency responds for a narrow purpose and then gradually their objectives change and they find themselves taking on responsibilities that were never originally intended. And of course the mission creep refers to the unintended uh, expansion of responsibilities. And of course while being flexible is an asset, it does become a problem when resources are committed to a cause for which it was never originally deployed. There are currently 14 federal emergency support functions. Again, it's not necessary to memorize them, but understand the principle by reviewing the list. And you'll see um, some of them that are included here, transportation, firefighting, mass care, etc. This is a continuation of the list. And you'll see that the list um, are the functional areas that need to be covered in an emergency. And as a side note, I know that I said there were 14, and here you see a list of 15. A more recent development in FEMA is the elimination of number 14, long-term community recovery. It's been superseded by the National Response Recovery Framework, so an entirely separate framework that, that takes care of that um, emergency support function. These functions that are needed to be covered, and, and each federal agency has a different part to play based on their mission and how it aligns with these individual function areas. Each of the 14 ESFs has three things, an ESF coordinator, a primary agency, and a support agency. The ESF coordinator has the ongoing management of that particular function area prior to, during, and after an emergency. Remember our emergency management mission areas? Of course you do. Prevention, protection, mitigation, response, and recovery. The coordinating agency is responsible for those as it relates to their ESF. There is only one agency that is assigned to serve this role, the role of the ESF coordinator uh, for each of the ESFs. Now second, a primary agency is related to an active emergency. A primary agency is a federal agency or department that has a significant authority or set of resources that are specifically related to a given emergency. Because there is some overlap in departmental missions, there may be more than one agency that is designated as a primary agency for an emergency. And then uh, thirdly, as, as its name suggests, a support agency is one that, again, during an active emergency, has specific capabilities for supporting primary agencies in their response. And let me show you a different graphic to help put this in perspective. What I've attached is a portion of a table created by FEMA in their ESF Annex. On the left is the federal agency, and on the top are the ESFs. Each box indicates which agency is an ESF coordinator, and that's 
designated with a C, which are primary agencies, a P, uh, for the given ESF, and which are support agencies with an S. So let's look at this a couple of different ways. First, we'll focus on um, a specific ESF, such as number 11 right here, Agriculture and Natural Resources. So in the first box, um, you'll see that it shows that the USDA is the ESF coordinator, note the C, a primary agency and a support agency. And so doesn't it stand to reason that the USDA would be that involved in anything having to do with this functional area, agriculture and natural resources? As the coordinating agency, they have responsible for that ESF full time, prior to, during, and after an emergency. In addition, an active emergency related to this ESF would involve the U.S. Department of Interior. The DOI would either serve as a primary agency themselves or possibly as a support agency to the USDA. You can also see there are a number of other supporting agencies in the case of an active emergency that relates to this ESF, such as the Department of Homeland Security, Health and Human Services, etc. So using this graphic, you could basically name an emergency and pretty much determine at a glance who is responsible for addressing the problem and the other agencies that are likely to be involved. This is the kind of framework, on, you know, portion under the national response framework that helps to avoid mission creep and the resulting duplication of efforts. Let's look at another one. The ongoing oversight of the ESF Public Safety and Security is the U.S. Department of Justice. Um, other supporting agencies, depending on the specific emergency, could include the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Defense, or maybe the uh, U.S. Coast Guard. So once again, all of this kind of makes sense. You look at the emergency support functions, you see who has uh, the main responsibility and who the other players might be in, during an active emergency. Let's try looking at it one other way. Perhaps you work for the U.S. Department of Energy or the DOE and you want to know what your responsibilities are for coordinating full-time or under what circ circumstances you would be involved as a significant player in an active emergency or when you may serve as a support agency in an active emergency. According to this table, the DOE is the ESF coordinator for ESF number 12, which is energy. Makes sense. It would also serve as a support agency if there was an active emergency involving, say, transportation right there in column one. So hopefully you get the idea. Um, also, maybe they would be a support agency for public health and medical services, etc. Returning to uh, an earlier slide that we've been using, you can now see how ESFs actually coincide quite nicely with the other portions of the National Response Framework. Part of the you know, guidance there on the left or the operational direction provided by the framework is based on which ESFs are activated in a given emergency. The NRF is directly related to federal response to emergencies, but you may recall that I mentioned before that there is an expectation that state, local, and tribal agencies would follow suit. To that end, many local agencies have adopted the ESFs as outlined by our national government. Even so, it is not uncommon for non-federal entities to make some modifications to that list to make it more applicable to their community. For instance, the state of Massachusetts has 18 ESFs instead of 14. Almost all of them match up to the list found in the NRF, even down to the very number, except, say, number 13. Instead of public safety and security, Massachusetts has gone with military support. So that would presumably address the involvement of the National Guard. They have, they have also a few additions to the federal list, such as law enforcement, animal protection, and business and industry. 
So the ESFs relate directly to the emergency manager. When a crisis occurs that requires the activation of the EOC, one of the emergency manager's first steps is to determine which of the ESFs are being activated. That will dictate which disciplines, agencies, or departments need to respond to the EOC. Remember, not every department needs to respond to the EOC for every kind of emergency. This is part of the concept of scalability, and ESFs help us to stay on track in that regard.